Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback review of the Fujitsu Stylistic Q572 Windows tablet here in 2018. There's a few reasons why we're checking out this tablet now. First of all, I've always been curious about Fujitsu computers. I've actually never tested one of their laptops, uh, so there's, this is one of their first products and I want to see how it performs. Sadly, these days it seems like Fujitsu and their stylistic line is more and more targeted towards businesses and institutions like schools rather than regular consumers, which is why it's not really a huge presence, um, at least here in the States. But this is a Japanese OEM, and otherwise the Q572 is unique because it's the only tablet that runs on an AMD processor uh, for Windows. And it came out with the AMD Hondo uh, uh, processor, which was designed to compete with the Atom, but of course, it hasn't been nearly as successful. Um, it's a super energy efficient chipset, but also not quite as efficient as the Atom, which is why the stylistic requires a fan, so it's uh, actively cooled. Um, it's not a passive machine, and that of course will require some extra juice, and so the battery life will be a little shorter. But it's an energy efficient dual core chipset, and otherwise it comes with a dedicated AMD Radeon HD 6250 GPU, so on paper, the the graphics processing unit is a lot stronger than any Intel integrated GPU, so perhaps this may be a better option for very light gaming compared to an Atom powered uh, you know, Windows tablet that came out from the same era. Uh, so this is a machine that came out around 2013, so it's you know a few years old, and it came out originally with Windows 8 Pro, uh, but it's since been updated to Windows 10 Pro. Interestingly, the benefit of having this AMD Hondo processor is that it supports more RAM than Intel Atom, at least back in the day. So whereas Atom was usually capped at 2 gigs of RAM uh, when it was in the Clover Trail days, which is a dual core chip chipset. Uh, this thing has 4 gigs of RAM out of the box. 4 gigs of RAM, even in 2018, at least on paper, is still something that is pretty good because most of the Windows tablets that we're seeing still come equipped with only 4 gigs. Um, it also comes with a 64 gig SSD. It's a true SSD and not eMMC, so boot up times are also pretty quick. Uh, and we would expect those things from a tablet that was designed for business use and it retailed for over a thousand dollars when it first came out. Now now you can find it on Amazon or eBay for around $100, even less. So uh, maybe it's a good budget value if you're looking for a well-built Windows tablet for uh, some very light uh, productivity tasks. So taking a look at the design, again, as the stylistic, it's not really a elegant or super thin portfolio. Um, it's you know more suited as a slightly rugged computer. The device itself has a 10.1 inch uh, capacitive IPS multi-touch display, which has pretty good viewing angles, but unfortunately it is only 720p so a standard resolution panel. There's also a physical key on the bottom that brings up the Windows uh, you know, bar. On the top here there's a webcam along with an LED flash and on the side here we have a number of ports and because this was designed for businesses it is one of the best parts of this tablet. So we see an active fan, there's also a full-sized HDMI port, full USB 2.0 port, full 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and the charger. Speaking of, the charger is actually quite compact. It's uh, very cute in its shape. I've never seen a Fujitsu sh a charger before, but this is what it looks like. It reminds me of a, a, a large eraser or a small kind of pencil case. So it definitely is very compact and easy to take with you. Uh, the tablet is a little bit slow to be charged up. It takes roughly 3.5 hours to charge, but uh, it can work, of course, while being plugged in. Um, afterwards, because this thing does have a running fan, it doesn't get quite as uh, high benchmarks and battery endurance as an Intel Atom counterpart. Um, it will only last you for about uh, you know five hours on a single go, which is a little disappointing. Um, on the bottom, bottom here, there's a proprietary dock connector, and there's also stereo speakers that actually deliver pretty impressive audio quality. So for watching a few YouTube clips, for streaming video, it does a good job. And then there's a second USB 2.0 port, a dedicated power switch. I can even turn off wireless controls immediately. There's um, LED lights for the battery status, and there's also volume controls and an OK key. So two USB ports built onto this thing, also not ridiculously thick. It's actually pretty manageable even now. It's quite a lightweight tablet, uh, so that's very impressive for I.O. There's also a, uh, a uh, lanyard strap because this thing comes equipped with an active stylus uh, by Wacom, so you can actually use it for handwriting recognition. It's pressure sensitive, which also makes it good for sketching and note taking. On the top here, there's also a unique uh, kind of slot that you can use to insert a, uh, a card. It's a card reader, so for other businesses, also for the government use, then that's another uh, built-in feature 
feature here. On the bottom here, there's also a full-size SD card reader. Furthermore, there is a hot swappable removable battery on here as well. So you can bring uh, or purchase multiple batteries and then sw switch them out uh, when you're in the field or working and the device will still remain on. There is a five megapixel camera on the back with autofocus and a biometric fingerprint scanner for added security. The tablet itself is made out of plastic though. The edges have a few chrome and metal accents, but it still feels relatively sturdy and well built. There's not too many rubber accents going on, so it's not exactly shock uh, absorbing. I wouldn't be comfortable, you know, dropping this to the floor uh, without a case, but as a whole, it feels, you know, again, pretty well constructed, um, although it does look a little dated with rather large bezels. So let's turn this on and take a close look at how it performs now with uh, Windows 10 uh, Pro uh, installed. So it boots right on up, and again with an SSD, uh, it is pretty quick in terms of loading. Now we are in Windows 10, and you can definitely hear the fan if I'm uh, quiet for a second and put this up to the microphone. So there's a slight hum, it's not too annoying, it's definitely you know, quieter than a uh, desktop computer or a laptop that has a more pr powerful processor, but uh, it is on and if you're in a completely quiet environment you can still hear it. So Windows 10 Pro, we have the tablet uh, mode on right now, which is why we see these touch uh, tiles, just like on Windows 8 Metro UI, which are easy for navigation. Everything still seems to be quite fluid and responsive uh, for general navigation. You can still see that everything is working. Uh, on the bottom here, there's Cortana. There is uh, going back. Uh, I can open up multitasking to see the apps that are currently open, Wi-Fi information, and also the stylus information uh, down below there. Taking a look at the camera, although it works, it's not a highlight. With that being said, as far as tablets go, it actually is decent, especially on a Windows tablet. Um, so if we have, let's say, a pen here, we can see that you can get pretty close to objects. Again, it is an autofocus sensor, uh, which means that you can just tap to focus and you can see that text is still quite legible and colors are actually pretty accurate. Once you are focused, it's pretty quick to capture a shot, although there isn't image stabilization, so you have to keep things quite still. We can also tell that the screen here is actually pretty bright uh, in terms of being indoors and in direct light right now. It still remains fully visible, so it has uh, around 600 nits of brightness which is again sufficient even for outdoor use despite the fact that it's a glossy screen which attracts a bit of fingerprints. Interface here is very standard for Windows. We have access just to a traditional layout that I can create a timer, I can change the uh, auto balance, I can also change the exposure, ISO, and on the side here I can record video up to uh, 720p on this particular model. Tapping on settings I can change some of the other things like uh, geotagging, uh, stuff like that. And over here I can uh, also switch over to the front-facing camera. So if we tap on that, you can see the front-facing camera is about the same as the rear. There's no autofocus, but uh, it also is pretty bright, so you can still see uh, you know, your face. Uh, if you're taking a selfie or calling someone using Skype, it actually works pretty well. So this is looking back at the image that we just took. I can zoom in, and there's actually some detail, especially if you're in a good lighting environment. And another shot that this, this was actually captured without any lights on uh, directly aiming at the painting, so it actually is fairly impressive in terms of the brightness. Obviously not a lot of details, and it's only five megapixel sensor, uh, but as a whole, colors are actually surprisingly accurate, and for scanning and documents, things like that, it actually works pretty well. Before examining the web browsing performance a bit more, I have Internet Edge open and I have a kind of inking mode on just to show that the touchscreen is actually quite responsive and it's easy to sketch and doodle. So if you're a student or a business professional, it works quite well, even with a passive stylus. And uh, the active stylus that comes bundled with it works even better for pressure sensitivity. But you can see that overall, um, it's quite easy to draw and write notes as well as highlight, things like that using this touchscreen. And Edge, of course, has this feature built right on in so I can doodle on top of web pages and send it uh, to a PowerPoint or share it with friends and family. So let's close out of this and now let's take a look at uh, performance using Chrome. So I still prefer Chrome just because it gets you slightly faster performance in general. Here's the on-screen keyboard. It's actually pretty responsive and easy to type on. Uh, you can also use handwriting recognition with the stylus. So a slightly smaller screen paired with a wide aspect ratio is what results in this kind of stretched and pretty comfortable to use virtual keyboard. Now I do wish that Fujitsu would have included maybe a keyboard dock as an optional accessory, but this one actually doesn't have it. Um, there is 
is a monitor dock available, but if you want to pair it to a keyboard, you have to do it yourself. Put it onto a regular stand like this one and then use Bluetooth to pair it with a mouse or keyboard. All right, so now we have the New York Times fully loaded. This is a good benchmark since it's a complex page. And you can see that it takes a little bit longer to completely load. Fully rendering this page, I would say, took about 30 seconds. Definitely not as fast as on a newer uh, Windows tablet or one with a you know, Intel Core M or Core i series processor. But all in all, not bad. Once the page does load, you can see that everything still remains quite fluid in terms of navigation. And of course, uh, all the ads as well as moving elements have fully loaded as well. I can pinch to zoom and the text will also reflow. And I can also flip the screen orientation. So uh, a split second later, the text needs to uh, reflow itself. And now we are in a slightly more comfortable format for reading, I guess, if you are holding it like a newspaper. So all in all, still makes for a decent web browsing experience here in 2018. Um, I would just have to say that you have to be a slightly more patient and wait for the pages to completely load. Overall performance is pretty similar to a Intel Clover Trail tablet. Um, so it's slightly behind an Intel Bay Trail or a Cherry Trail device that we have today. So you have to wait for a little longer. Luckily, the Wi-Fi reception still seems to be pretty good. We have about three bars out of four for, even though the router is actually pretty far away from this room right now, so it's still remaining connected and pages are loading at a respectable speed, which is nice to see. And um, again, I can tap on the uh, Windows key here and again, I have all my applications pop up. You saw that delay there. It's not quite as fluid or fast um, you know, as we've come to expect. And uh, overall though, uh, the nice thing about having four gigs of RAM at least is that multitasking works well. Once a app or page is loaded, you can really quickly jump back and forth between those programs. So it comes down to that problem where is it better to have a fast processor or is it better to have more RAM? And the answer really depends on what your use case is. Having more RAM means that yes, you can actually still open and run tasks uh, and programs like Adobe Photoshop and do a little bit of light video editing. However, uh, having a slow processor means that you'll also have to be waiting uh, you know, quite a bit for those things to eventually run and to work. Um, so there's drawbacks to either one. Um, you know, ha not having enough RAM, but having really fast processor uh, often means that you can only run one or two programs at once. Uh, but on this, it seems like I can open up lots of different things, and it is still very quick when you're jumping back into it. But it's just the processor itself that is a little bit slow. When it comes to video performance, it also works quite well. Again, the screen has good viewing angles and brightness, uh, so it uh, is pretty enjoyable in this widescreen format. It works with 4K and 1080p videos without any stuttering, and it's actually pretty quick to load. Um, afterwards, I can scrub between parts of the video without any issues. Um, so if I scrub along, and kind of mute the sound here, uh, you can tell that the overall uh, quality is quite good in terms of frame rates. Everything seems quite smooth, even for, again, a 1080p or even a 4K video file uh, and MP4 format, which is quite impressive. This is just using the standard Microsoft uh, movie player, and you can also install VLC if you want to support a few more uh, uh, slightly less common video, video codecs and formats. Um, so as a whole, it makes for a good entertainment tablet. Great for presentations, great for watching videos. Other things on here, there's the, uh, I've loaded up an Adobe Acrobat Reader for PDF documents, and you can see that it works quite well. So most of the Adobe uh, software, whether it's Photoshop, whether it's a uh, reader, all works surprisingly well on this tablet. You have to wait for a few seconds longer for everything to open, but once it does, uh, there are no real issues. Going to this PC, we can also take a look at its system properties. So indeed we have, uh, you can see around 40 gigs available out of the 64 gigs. So that is the memory taken up by the operating system. And if we go into computer and system properties, uh, we can also confirm that again, this is uh, a device running with four gigs of RAM and the unique Intel AMD Z60 uh, processor with the dedicated GPU. It does have faster frame rates than on a Intel Atom tablet because of the dedicated GPU. However, you are still restricted because the system memory is a little bit low, uh, so you don't want to find games that take up too much of that storage. And at the same time, the processor, again, is still very much entry level, uh, so it, it can only handle so much. However, most of the titles that you would download from the Microsoft Store, most of those being mobile titles, uh, as well as things like Asphalt 8, will run without any problems. But when you start going into more uh, 
uh, intensive games, uh, that's where you'll notice a lot longer delays and a lot more stuttering uh, in between the loading. Once things are loaded, again, the dedicated GPU and the RAM keeps things running fairly smoothly, but you don't want to be waiting, let's say, five to ten minutes just for something to load. Uh, so this is by no means a gaming computer or a gaming tablet, uh, but again, performance is slightly better than what you would find on a Intel Atom device. That's more or less it for our revisited review of the Fujitsu Stylistic Q572. As the lone tablet running on AMD's Hondo processor, uh, it's a noteworthy tablet, but also one which didn't fare well commercially and was a bit of a disappointment because compared to Intel's Clover Trail Atom, uh, tablets. It uh, required more power, even though it was already the most energy efficient chip in AMD's line. Uh, the fact that you had a, a real active fan keeping things uh, cooled down meant that the battery was often uh, you know, a few hours behind what the best uh, Clover Trail tablets could deliver. And performance, to be honest, is pretty similar. Unless you're opening up Photoshop, unless you are opening up specific programs that really require lots of RAM, uh, which to be honest, you shouldn't be looking at a tablet in the first place, uh, getting a Ultrabook, a convertible, a laptop would probably be the better way anyways, or certain instances where having a dedicated GPU uh, has a slight edge, but as a whole it wasn't really enough to uh, cut into Intel's dominance uh, of, of market share, and that's why again AMD were never really uh, successful with their mobile processors and the Hondo experiment was mostly a commercial failure. Uh, with that being said, I was still it was still quite fun to take a look back at this particular tablet just to see here in 2018 how well it runs, and surprisingly it still does a decent job. Sure, you have to wait a little bit longer, but once things do run, it's actually quite smooth thanks to the fact that it had 4 gigs of RAM, which was definitely uncommon back in 2013. The average for a tablet uh, back then, especially a, a slightly uh, mid-end end one was about 2 gigs, so having that extra RAM does mean that it's still a viable option here uh, if you are a consumer, you're on a budget, and you want to consider consider this maybe as a low-cost uh, alternative if you can find it, again, for under $100 on Amazon or eBay. Um, for you know, consumers, I would say that it's a decent choice now if you do want a tablet with handwriting recognition if you are a student. Um, and the wealth of uh, full-size ports, including the HDMI port, uh, there's also a smart card reader, the fact that you have a swappable battery, and also a surprisingly decent camera and actually pretty impressive speakers are all areas where the tablet shines uh, compared to other consumer class tablets on the market. Uh, but at the time, it still wasn't really enough to justify the super high price combined with performance that was so-so. Still, for light web browsing, for basic productivity like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, for some very light gaming, it still performs uh, decently. So you can check out more details about this, AM, this uh, AMD-powered Fujitsu stylistic in our official written review. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS.